Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Hey, chill, dude. Are you nervous? Yeah, kind of. Relax, man. It's just an interview. Thanks, man. Nice shirt, by the way. Oh, this this is Peter England. I specifically chose this color so it will stand out. Nice, nice, nice. You relax, dude. Yeah, yeah. Gonna thanks, it. thanks, thanks. Yeah. Woo! Seriously, bro. I have an interview, bro. How am I gonna attend the interview, bro? What am I going to tell the interviewers, bro? Chill, chill, chill. In case if they ask bro. you why your shirt is wet, tell them there's actually a science behind your wet shirt. Bro, okay, okay? how are they going to believe me, bro? They'll think I'm just bluffing. Trust me, you're going to get this bro, job. Bro, I don't have a job. They're I don't have a bike. You, man. My parents. Bro, you got to calm down. My bike. God. Bro, trust me. Bro, you got to trust me. Bro, trust me, bro. To see an object, two important things are required. One is the eye and the other is light. Now watch this. To see an object, light must fall on it. If there is no light, you can't see the object. Let me ask you a question. How do you know that this is a red t-shirt, this is a blue jean and this is a yellow pin? Say for instance, light is falling on this cloth. This cloth absorbs a certain amount of light and reflects only the red light. That reflected red light enters our eye and lands on the retina which has light detecting cells. These cells convert light into signals and send them to brain. The brain interprets those signals as different colors like red, blue, yellow, etc. And that's how we are able to see all the colors. So, in other words, to see any color properly, the light source is necessary. If the light is dim, the color of my t-shirt will look darker. If the light source is completely cut off, it looks black. Why? Because only when there is enough light, the brain can process the color properly. But how is this related to wet clothes appearing darker? At a microscopic level, when clothes get wet, a thin layer of water forms over the fabric. So even before light reaches the cloth, first it has to cross that water layer. Some light reflects off the water surface itself. The rest enters the water. Since water is denser than air, light slows down and bends. This bending is called refraction. After refraction, a part of the light gets absorbed by the cloth, while another part reflects back weakly. And most importantly, some of the light gets trapped inside the water layer, bouncing back and forth. This is called internal reflection. Well, let's make it clearer with an experiment. Take a laser light and shine it into water. You can see the light bend. That's refraction. If I keep changing the angle, at one point, the refracted ray travels exactly along the surface. That angle is called the critical angle. Now, if I increase the angle further, the light doesn't escape out at all. Instead, it keeps bouncing inside the water. That's total internal reflection. That's total internal reflection. The same thing happens with wet clothes. Some light enters the water film on the fabric and gets internally reflected. Some light is absorbed by the cloth itself. As a result, only very little light enters back to our eyes. That's why clothes appear darker when wet. And this principle of internal reflection isn't just about wet clothes. The fiber optic cables that carry internet across the world works entirely on total internal reflection. These cables are made of glass core. Light signals are sent through them. Thanks to total internal reflection, the light keeps bouncing back inside the cable traveling long distances without escaping. That's how your emails, your YouTube videos, WhatsApp chats, Instagram reels travel literally at the speed of light from servers across the globe. So the next time you see a wet t-shirt turn dark, just remember that the same science, the same science powers your Wi-Fi, your Netflix and the entire internet. That's about it, sir. Impressive, man. Thank you, sir.